In this video, I'll review the Cave Survey data functions in TopoDroid. For an overview of this Android application and how to use the DistoX features, please see Part 1 of this series. And for a tutorial on sketching, look for Part 3. I'll put links to these companion videos in the description below. From the main menu, there will be four buttons at the top of the screen. The left button takes you to the DistoX management menu. The second button is to start a new survey. The third button is to import a survey, and the far right button accesses the sketching tool palette. If you've previously started a survey, then you'll see a list of these in the window below, and tapping one of these will open it so you can continue adding data or continue sketching. To import a survey, it's easiest if it has been saved as a zip file, but it must be in the default topodroid slash zip folder for the application to find it. Before you import or start a new survey, you may want to go to the options menu in the upper right corner, then open settings and scroll down to survey data near the bottom. This allows you to set things such as how the data will be displayed, station naming conventions, and the default measurement units. There are many other customizable settings here that I won't go through, but it's worth spending a little time to configure things the way you want. When starting a new survey, you need to give it a name and you can adjust the date, add the names of the survey team members, and add a description of what is being surveyed. There's also an option for entering the declination, but I prefer to keep this blank so that everything gathered in the cave is oriented to magnetic north. You can also designate the name of the first station. The private cross-sections checkbox simply indicates whether any cross-sections will remain with a single sketch page, in other words private, or be shared across multiple sketch pages that may use the same data. I generally leave this box unchecked. Saving the new survey takes you back to the main menu, whereas opening will take you immediately to the new survey interface. Once a new survey or existing survey is opened, you'll have a window that will display the list of survey shots, and there will be several buttons at the top of the screen. If there's ever any question about what these buttons are for, which there will be, open the Options menu, which is the three dots in the upper right-hand corner, then select Help. This gives a description of the function of each button, and you can open the user manual for a more detailed explanation. The first button on the left, with the down arrow, is for retrieving data from a paired Disto X. The Bluetooth button opens a menu with several options, including resetting the connection and several Disto X controls. I generally prefer to control the Disto using the Disto buttons directly, but the option to turn the laser on or off and take shots remotely is available. The third button from the left allows you to adjust what information is displayed for the shot data. The fourth button accesses the sketches, which will be covered in a separate video. The fifth button is for logging any notes about the survey. This can be a handy place to record rigging information, to inventory cached gear, to make notes about potential climbing leads, or anything else that should be archived. The sixth button, with the plus sign, is used to manually enter survey shot data if you aren't using a Disto X or a Disto X that is impaired. The triangle with the dot, which is a symbol for the survey stations, brings up the Save Station menu. This can be used to record information about stations for later recall. The best use of this feature is to record leads and include a comment about where the lead is relative to the station, the size of the lead, etc. This information gets written to a database and can be recalled later so that you always have an active and up-to-date lead list. The next button, with the magnifying lens icon, opens a Station Search dialog menu. The final button, a circle with an arrow, is the Extended Profile Sketch Reference menu. This can be used to specify whether the extended profile should always be drawn to the right, left, or automatically change direction based on the azimuth of the shot relative to a reference direction. The Extended Profile direction can also be manually set as each shot is taken from within the Shot dialog menu. In the shot window, the data is color-coded with different text colors as well as highlighting colors used to communicate the type of shot and its status. In the display mode menu, I usually turn off shot ID, splay shots, and repeated leg shots in order to simplify what is displayed. There are no headers above the list of shots, but by default it is always shown with the from station name, to station name, distance, azimuth, and inclination. The data display information can be changed in the settings menu. Leg shots contain both a from and to station and the text color is white. If you take multiple leg shots, such as with the Disto X triple shot check, those repeat measurements will be shown in gray. Splay shots have a from station but no to station and are shown in blue text. If L rods are manually entered, then these will be shown in teal. 
If both the from and to stations are missing, this is known as a blank shot and will be displayed in orange. If you have backsight leg shots, they will be in yellow, and the active station will be displayed in green. There are brackets at the end of each row of data that shows how a shot will be displayed in the extended profile sketch page. There are other symbols that may be displayed other than brackets that indicate whether there is a photo attached to the shot, it's part of a surface survey, it's a redundant shot, or whether it will only be used on either the profile or plan view sketches. There are a few background colors that may be used to highlight rows of data. If the station names have a blue-green background, this indicates that it's a recent shot. An orange background indicates an unusually short shot. Shots that have been excluded have a gray background, and a light red background indicates that the Disto X magnetometer data is unusual. This usually means there's some sort of magnetic interference and the shot should be repeated. From the list of shots, a short tap on the data portion will open the information dialog window. Short tapping on any of the station names will open the list of splay shots for that station. Tapping the same station name again will close that list of splays. Tapping and holding the data portion of a shot will highlight the station names in gray and starts multi-selection. Once multi-selection has been started, other rows can be added with a short tap. New buttons appear at the top of the page that allow changing the extended profile direction or deleting the shots. Tapping and holding on a station name turns that station name green, which indicates that it's now the active station, and any new survey shots will start with this as the from station. Any single survey shot can be modified by tapping on the data portion of that shot, which opens the shot edit dialog. The survey data is shown at the top and can only be edited for manually entered data. Station names can be changed, and the left and right arrows can be used to cycle forwards or backwards to the next or previous shots in the list. The reverse button will swap the station names, essentially switching between a front sight and back sight. A note can be added, and the direction for displaying the line plot for an extended profile can be chosen. The vert button doesn't extend the survey shot left or right, but just shows the vertical component of the shot. I don't ever find a need to use this. Near the bottom is a row of icons. The first three of these are flags that are used to exclude data from the compiled survey. The double line icon indicates a duplicated or redundant survey shot, and the blue and gray colored box indicates that the shot is part of a surface survey. The hashtag icon is used to comment out the data, which is another way to say the data is for informational purposes only. An example might be if you take a shot up a dome or down a pit to get a general idea of the location and height without it being a formal survey shot. The double line with the up arrow moves the data to the previous survey leg, and the double line with the down arrow moves it to the following survey leg. Selecting the arrow pointing left designates the data as a back sight. This doesn't change the values or how they are plotted, but the shot will show as yellow text in the survey list. The icon with the 123 is used to rename subsequent survey stations in the list following the standard naming routine. The final icon is used to rename splay shots for any stations where the from station name has been changed. At the bottom of the shot dialog is the More button, which opens another window where left, right, up, and down data can be manually entered or the shot can be deleted. There are additional buttons here for adding a photo, an audio recording, or sensor data from the tablet or an external device, all of which will be associated with that survey shot. From the Options menu, you can select Survey Info, which opens a window similar to the new survey dialog. From here, you can modify information about the survey. The first button opens the Survey Notes page. The second button opens a window that gives a summary of the survey data, including the number of stations, shots, and splays, as well as the total survey length and number of loops. The fourth button will open Cave 3D if it's installed on your device. The separate Android application allows you to see a rotatable 3D representation of the survey. The final two buttons access a list of saved photos and sensor data. Opening the Options menu from within Survey Info accesses options for deleting or exporting the survey. With that overview of the survey data functions in TopoDroid, you should have a better idea of how to start or import a survey, how to add new survey data, and how to manipulate that data. In the final TopoDroid video I'm preparing, I'll review the sketching tools for drawing plan, profile, and cross-sections. Mm -hmm.